everyone and welcome to a new video series called Culinary Crime. So this is a new type of video I'm going to be doing on my channel where I combine my love of cooking with my love for true crime stories because your girl loves a good true crime story. Today we're going to be making pretzel burger bombs and if you want the recipe you can look down in the description below for that as well as all the measurements and things you'll need. So I invite you to come cook along with me or just watch and listen to today's case, which is the case of the poisoned pain reliever. So the case starts off with a bank manager from Seattle, Washington called Sue Snow. As she was getting ready for her day, her daughter Haley had snuck in behind her in the family bathroom to take a shower. And unfortunately, the water from the shower kind of drowned out the sound of Sue passing out and collapsing. So it wasn't until after Haley was done with her shower that she thought her mom collapsed on the floor. They rushed her to the hospital and at 40 years old and in perfect health, she passed away as soon as she arrived. So being that she was in perfect health, everyone was really confused at what caused her death. So coroners did an autopsy and they found that her death was not caused by any anatomical reason, which means that her body didn't do anything to cause her to die. She didn't have a stroke or a heart attack. They couldn't figure out why she died. That is until they opened her chest cavity and the assistant to the coroner smelled bitter almond. Bitter almond is a scent that is closely identified with cyanide. Usually if you smell bitter almond, that is what cyanide is. And so they decided to do a blood test on Sue Snow's blood to confirm the presence of cyanide and it did come back positive. So they ruled her death death by acute cyanide poisoning. Somewhere along the way, Sue's sister Sarah had remembered a time when she was visiting her sister and found capsules of Excedrin versus tablets of Excedrin. I know this is like a really weird thing to point out to investigators, but all of their lives, these two sisters had been taking Excedrin tablets, but she found capsules and she decided not to take it. She remembered that being really weird and mentioned it to investigators. And they, of course, started turning their attention to Paul, who was the husband of Sue Snow, actually a new husband. They had only been married for six months. He was a long haul truck driver and he had kind of like a gruff demeanor about him. And so people were wondering, you know, was he jealous that Sue was making so much money while he was doing this like hard work, driving across the country, not being able to be home? Was he like jealous that Sue sometimes would flirt with other people at the bank? What was the reason that they could pin that he could possibly be the murderer? So they asked Paul about the capsules and he admitted that he had told Sue that he wanted to change from tablets to capsules. This whole thing seems really weird to me because if I have a headache, I just go get whatever I, I need. Like sometimes I get capsules because they dissolve faster and sometimes I don't. But anyway, he admitted that he wanted to change to capsules, but he did not admit to doing anything to the capsules. So they ended up testing the capsules and did find the cyanide in those capsules. So someone was poisoning Sue. And obviously the first look goes to the husband or the spouse or the partner. Another reason why they kind of were pointing their finger at Paul is because he wasn't grieving the way that they thought he should grieve. And that's really important to remember because actually Paul took a lie detector test and passed it about tampering with the Excedrin. So he was removed from the suspect list. But people thought that because he wasn't grieving the same way as them, that he was guilty. While all of this investigation was going on, the company that manufactured Excedrin was being super cautious and decided to recall all of the bottles of the same lot number as the bottle that Sue was poisoned with because they didn't know if there was something going on at the factory or if something had happened. So they wanted to go ahead and recall all of them. When they recalled these bottles, they actually found two more bottles on the shelf that had been filled with cyanide. There were a couple of, there were a couple of capsules, not the whole thing, but there were a couple of capsules in each of these. So naturally this made the news and the story was kind of blowing up in the media and investigators got contacted by a woman named Stella. And Stella had basically contacted them to tell them that her husband Bruce had died not long after taking some Excedrin. So when they heard that someone else had found 
these and died from them and when they found out that there were extra bottles on the shelf with cyanide in them they started to think it was a murderer or some kind of medical terrorist who was trying to kill a bunch of people through poisoning them. So investigators went by to Stella's house and they picked up the bottles of the medicine that she still had that Bruce had taken before he died. She requested that her husband Bruce's case be reopened because he was actually declared dead by a different way. They didn't really like check his blood for cyanide because like why would you? There's no reason for you to check blood for cyanide. They reopened his case and tested his blood and did find that in fact he was poisoned by the cyanide in the Excedrin caplets. So remember when I told you that two of the bottles that were recalled from the shelves had tested for cyanide? The way that they found that out was actually through an x-ray. They didn't actually open the capsules yet at this point. So they looked at an x-ray because there's something about like the density of cyanide that's different so it shows up on an x-ray. And so that's how they found them initially. So they went to go ahead and open those capsules, like Stella's capsules, the capsules from Sue's house, the capsules from the shelves. And they decided to use a mass spectrometer to basically find all of the chemicals that were inside of that capsule. They wanted to know exactly what had been put in there. And when they did that, they actually found little green specks in the the capsules. They were like, okay, this is weird. That's why they decided to use the mass spectrometer. Those ingredients actually are the ingredients that make up algicide, which is something that people put into their fish tanks to kill off algae so that it doesn't grow all over the fish tank. So investigators had to go to a ton of pet stores in the area with their ingredients list to see if any product that was sold was actually a match to those ingredients list. And they found one. It was the same color of the little specks that were found in the capsules and it was called Algae Destroyer. So once they found this out, they told investigators, and y'all remember homegirl Stella, that an investigator went by her house to pick up the bottles of cyanide laced etc. The investigator that went to her house remembered that she had a real bougie fish tank in her house. Authorities visited more than 50 pet stores in Stella's area with her picture to ask store owners if they remembered selling algae destroyer to her or to any anyone else in their photo lineup. And one pet store owner remembered selling to her and he said this. He said, I told her what I always tell my customers who buy these algae destroyer tablets. You have to grind them up for them to be effective so that they dissolve in the water because if you don't then the tablet will take longer to dissolve in water and it might not be as effective. So with the confirmation that Stella had purchased these tablets and with the thought that she would have had to grind them up as the store owner said, they turned their attention over to Stella. And in their investigations, they found out that Stella was set to receive $100,000 extra if her husband Bruce had died an accidental death. And when they had interviewed her fam some of her family members and her neighbors, they found out that Stella was going through a lot of hardships financially with her husband. They um, actually found a letter that she had sent to one of the companies that they owed saying, that she's going through marital problems and they should be over soon. She promises to pay them a certain amount of money as well. But it kind of goes beyond the money because like, would you really kill someone that you love that deeply for a hundred thousand dollars? Like, I don't, I don't think I would kill anyone I love for any kind of money. But she also had an issue with Bruce because he was getting his life together. That sounds so weird. But Stella was the type of girl who wanted to go out and be seen. She wanted, like, she wanted to dress up and go to a bar. Bruce actually started to go to AA meetings and um, he was going to rehab for his alcoholism. And so they weren't living the life that she wanted to live anymore. It was boring to her. So that also played like a major role in authorities' assessment of what Stella did to her husband. To make matters worse, they had a signature expert examine the signature on the life insurance policy, and they examined it beside um, Stella's signature and her husband Bruce's signature, and they found that it closely matched Stella's signature. So Stella had signed her own husband's name on a life insurance policy so that she would collect money in the event that he died in an accidental death. And finally, the piece de resistance. Her own daughter, Cindy, told authorities that Stella talked about the fact that she killed him. She checked out books 
from the library about poisoning people and they found her fingerprints on a page about cyanide. This lady literally got away with murder because her husband's death, if I forgot to mention this, was ruled um, like that he died for something with his heart, that his heart failed or something. When she found out that they did not rule her husband's death an accidental death by poisoning, she decided that she was going to fill more bottles of medicine with cyanide and put them on the shelves in hopes that someone else would die so that she could get money for her husband dying because then her case would be reopened, her husband's case would be reopened. They would re-examine these caplets and find that he indeed was poisoned. She literally got away with murder once no one suspected that she killed her husband because the coroner ruled it as heart failure or something like that. She got away with murder and then decided to murder more people inadvertently so that she could get $100,000 more for her husband's life insurance policy. And the reason that she knew that it would work on her husband, the cyanide poisoning the first time, is that her husband had these chronic headaches so he took pain medicine all the time and so all she did was switch out his Excedrin tablets for the ones with cyanide in them. And the whole thing that gave her away were those fish tablets, those algae destroyer tablets, because if that had not been in there, she probably would have gotten away with it too, because investigators never found the bowl that she ground it up in. Investigators believe that she ground up the tablets and then used the same bowl without like washing it out or wiping it out to grind up cyanide. And so it mixed them together and that's why the green particles were in there and that's how they found her out. Authorities never actually found the cyanide, they never found any of the tablets or evidence of the tablets, and they never found the, grind the bowl that she used to grind it up, which they think was like, is it like a spice bowl? Like you put like spices in it, oh yeah, a mortar and pestle. Um, they think that she had one of those to grind up things and that she just ground everything together in that. But they never found it, so they couldn't connect her on that physical evidence. But they had so much other evidence that it was ridiculous and there was no way that she was going to get away with this twice. So obviously she was convicted of the murder of her husband and of Sue Snow, which is the right thing in my opinion. And she is serving 90 years in prison. But let's go see how our food turned out. Uh. Alright, so finished product and we got some fries it's time for you to try it yeah pick, pick one okay you're such a goo it's what i do what complicated human being can you see the cross section oh, you're not even showing the cross section is it good Really? Premium pretzel, bro. Good. My turn. No, Gabby's turn. The chef. The chef. The chef. Solid crunch. Mm. <laughs> that is really good, isn't it? My baby know what she's doing, pa. <laughs> I bet this would be good with, like, nacho cheese dip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Do me a favor and tell me down in the comments if you liked this video, if you like this style. Do you like true crime? Do you like cooking? Do you like them together? I hope you guys like this. I really like cooking and I'm really loving the research that goes into these true crime videos. So please leave a comment down below and let me know if you liked it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!